rather than showing some basic tips I thought I'd put together a few of the tips which I've learned over my time and which are really helpful and should come in use. So let's go, first tip. Tip one. So the first tip I've got is for hidden tang knives. When you're trying to drill the tang, a lot of the time um, it can still be quite hard even if you try and keep it soft and it's a nightmare. I've broken plenty of drill bits when I've had the scales on and I've tried to drill through the tang. So what I usually do is I'll drill a hole and make sure I've got some um, either brass or copper rod which fits and then I cut off a slug and peen it in like so. One thing what I forgot to mention is always countersink slightly on each side that helps to peen mushroom over and fit into there so this little slug is now not coming out it's in there nice and solid. Tip 2. With my kitchen knives I like to round over the spine and the finger choil to make it a lot comfier for the end user so here's a little tip to help you stop breaking the sandpaper as you're doing it. With my normal sandpaper what I'll do is I'll tape the back with some normal duct tape and now I can cut as thick or as thin strips as I like off this and I aren't going to worry about the paper tearing because it offers a bit of backing strength I really like when I'm doing the finger choils to use about 5mm strips and as you can see there if the camera will focus the edges are real neat of uh, when you rip the emery cloth, it's real rough and it tends to mar up other parts. I also find it has a greater improved flexibility over the emery cloths because it's a lot thinner. Tip 3 One other thing in regards to hand sanding, I always dry hand sand now. I used to use a cutting fluid but I found that the cutting fluid helps the metal sort of bind into the sandpaper and it wears out a lot quicker. I know that Mareko Momasi of Momasi Fire Arts said on a recent uh, knife top podcast that he dry hand sands as well so if it's good enough for him it's good enough for me tip four another really useful thing what i like to do is with my g10 liners and with whatever scales i'm going to put on there before i glue up you need to sand the surface because as you can see it's shiny um, it takes a long time to hand sand so what i like to do is use the random orbital sander with i think it's a 120 grit um, pad on it And that's just turned probably a 10-15 minute job into about a 3 second job. You've got to remember though, because the pad is flexible, it'll round over the edges, so oversize your G10. So add glue, probably about 2-3 mils in from the edge, which you probably would anyway. Obviously on the smaller parts, it doesn't take too long at all anyway, but this has really helped me when I've been doing batch orders, so if I've got 
about five knives all with the same liners to glue together then I'll leave it as one big chunk of liner and hit all the way over it with the random orbital. Tip five. When I'm gluing my liners to my scales I like to use a thick CA glue which is slow cure because I want my scales to be as tight to my liners as possible and sometimes the bond just isn't as tight with um, epoxy This grease proof paper stops the glue sticking That should be ready in about five minutes. It's already started curing now. So there you go. What I also like to do is drill a number of holes going through the liners into the scales slightly that I can fill up with epoxy and it'll give it like a um, sort of a secondary bonding. Tip six. For this final tip, I'm gonna show you how to thin your scales out nice and evenly. I'll usually use a height marking gauge but for the purpose of this I've got just a chunk of metal not everyone's got a height marking gauge and this is the perfect thickness that I'd want it that mark along all four sides so this is the thickness I'm going to end up with and what I'm going to do now is take this down all around the edges nice and evenly to the line on the grinder. This could obviously be done on any grinder. I'm just gonna use my 2x72. So as you can see here, I've chamfered all the edges down to the line and now it makes it easier. I'm gonna put this flat against the platen and I can watch, I'll keep rotating and I can watch while it all gets down to the line so it should end up flat. There you go, nice and flat, nice even thickness. So just to prove here, that's now set to 11, tightened up. Thanks for watching this video, I hope it was helpful to some of you. Uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And if you aren't already, check out some of my other videos and check out my sponsors linked in the description. Thank you.